Man, it, it, it kind of sucks because when I'm super excited about something and I want to show it off to you guys and scream from the highest of rooftops or at least this studio, how freaking awesome it is. I always feel like these videos are like me going on trial, me having to put on my case for why this thing is freaking amazing that people still really doubt my opinions. But hey, here we go again with me proclaiming that the thing I'm going to show off today is the best pistol in the entirety of the nerf hobby and i know time is a linear thing you can't stop it it's constantly moving forward we are constantly advancing towards a new goal and yes there will probably be something that supplants it but this thing is so far and above really anything else we have in the hobby right now i i, I honestly there's gonna be a lot of gushing in this video there's so much stuff about this blaster but here's the fact that it's uh it's it's this and it uh it does that there's one dart left in the mag. And it, it has a board with a screen. And you can control everything. Select fire. It's the best. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Get amazing wireless earbuds that fit you perfectly for a fraction of the price of competitors without sacrificing on that sweet audio quality with Raycon. And with my link at the top of the video description, you can save even more. Their new improved everyday earbuds have a slew of new features and offer improved rubber oil look and feel with upgraded gel tips for the perfect fit in any ear. You'll get eight hours of playtime in one go with a 32 hour battery life. And there's a built-in mic so you can take calls with just the push of a button. Not only do they cost less, but they sound just as good. And if you're not convinced, Raycon offers a 45 day happiness guarantee. I use the Raycons at most when I'm laying in bed and trying to catch up on some sleep, listening to podcasts or longer form YouTube videos. And they're super handy when I'm filming B-roll around the property and want to keep myself pumped for videos. I'd say I'd use them for exercise, but we all know I don't do that. I mean exercise, because if I did, I'd totally use them. Because they don't fall out no matter what I do. Raycons are super convenient. The small case charges the earbuds when you're not using them, meaning they'll last a super long time based off one charge, and everything fits neatly in my pocket with no tangled cords. Remember tangled cords? Now my phone doesn't even have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The future kind of rocks with Raycon. The everyday earbuds even feature wireless charging, so you can be truly completely wireless if you're that far ahead of us mere mortals. Use the link at the top of my video description or on screen now to save up to 20% off. Not only are you supporting my channel, but they also make a great holiday gift for anyone you may be drawing a blank on getting something for this year. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. This is the Pew Pew done by PewTech or Pippo. And you can find them on Instagram if you want to get a hold of them, which is about one of the only ways you're ever going to get your hands on one of these blasters right now. And uh, as far as I know, they have absolutely no plans to ever release the files or anything for this 3D printed blaster, which power to them, because nowadays if you release a pop or a blaster, some Chinese company is going to completely rip off your design and sell it on Amazon for peanuts at a fraction of the quality. And we're tired of it. I, I'm personally tired of it, and I'm sure every other creator is tired of it, because what's the point of making something cool if every single time you do that, somebody else is going to outright steal it and sell it over you, which is really disappointing. So power to Pewtech for hopefully never releasing these files, and the only way you can ever get one of these is by giving them your money. How much money? We'll talk about that, because it is, it is not a small number. But it is a very small blaster. This is one of the smallest Nerf blasters you can get your hands on. 3D printed, fed from worker talent mags and uses cut down Nerf darts, or in this case, Adventure Force Pro darts for the sake of this review. It is tiny, small. Here's a jolt. Here's a pew pew. Single shot, front loading, T-pole prime on the bottom. Select fire, magazine fed, hits three times harder. Yeah, this, this blaster is so far above and beyond anything I've ever gotten my hands on before that I really don't even know where else to go in order because the person who made this didn't have a lot of experience with our hobby. They didn't have a lot of 3D printed Nerf blasters. They didn't have a whole lot of anything regarding the actual hobby and yet they built by far one of the most technologically advanced and well-designed blasters in this entire community. In fact, I will go out on a limb and say this has forever changed this hobby because you know people are already scrambling to get their hands on it, rip it apart, and take every little bit of insight they can out of this thing into their own projects. 
because that's just how freaking good it is. And you know what? I've earned the right to say that because uh, I own these. This is like $1,100 in my hands right here. These are very expensive, handmade, completely awesome blasters that are almost now, at least this one is worthless. Uh, besides the fact that it's covered in anime girls and it looks really cool. Cause, uh, cause the Pew Pew is the same thing with way more features. And it's, it's not even half the size. It's like a quarter of the size. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of eviscerates any point of having an FDL, which is kind of the baseline for the hobby when it comes to high-end 3D printed blasters, but that design is a couple of years old, and this design is literally nothing like those. It's completely built from the ground up, almost in a vacuum. I mean, it does borrow some concepts. It uses a solenoid, which is smaller solenoid than any other blaster I've ever seen. In fact, I was under the impression you couldn't get solenoids small enough to fit in a blaster like this, and if you could, why didn't everyone else use them? But apparently you can, because it's in here and it uses a micro flywheel setup. Brushless, which I've seen a couple of times, but in this case scenario, it, it hits really hard and it fires really fast and it's extremely comfortable and it's tiny and it's magazine fed and it fires really fast and has select fire. And you can tune all these things to do pretty much whatever the heck you want, including change the velocity of which you fire the darts, the rate of fire, how many darts it fires in a burst, how fast it fires in full auto, and more features that I don't even really want to toy around with because you can irreversibly break your blaster and that's why they're in a hidden menu that you can really only access with a set of directional commands. Although, did I even know? There's a there's a freaking PSP thumbstick on the side of this blaster. You are not imagining things. If you notice that, you have a certain amount of class and, and you are extremely welcome in my circle of friends because this is so freaking cool i don't even know where to begin and also has a screen on it now it doesn't do like hey of like readouts of ammo because that's almost entirely pointless when the screen's on the side of it you can't notice it and that would be like one of the only things i've like added to this blaster that's completely superfluous at this point but it does give you the rate of fire like literally how many darts a second even if you set it at 30 it will still tell you what the rate of fire you are practically achieving is. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, let's go over to the chronograph and everything because I have a whole lot more about this blaster that is just ingenious if you aren't already convinced. Gonna be very, very hard to get a uh, focus on that, but we have it at single shot at 100% speed. We'll see what it can do. It doesn't have a rev trigger or anything like that, so it's just fire and uh, dart comes out. 145, 128, I think it's shooting two right now, 151. It's definitely shooting two. 165, 128, 129, 148, 150, 150, 146, 145, 140, and we're out. Uh, that's a bit of a problem with having something that fires so freaking fast, but still perfectly acceptable. So this is about the only way that I can do any kind of uh, explanation of what this system is here. Cause, oh, out of focus. So here's what we got. There is an indicator light on the back right above what this is, is a USB-C port, but it's for updating the firmware, I believe. I have no idea. What basically you do is you hold the trigger until you hear the last note of the Zelda theme or that light goes green. See, it starts up there and it says booted up. System is pretty straightforward. You use this to access everything. So if I click this to the right, it allows me to select single and I can change it between the three modes of fire. So we can do single, burst, Speed is how fast the blaster's actually revving. So if I turn this down, click over. You can see it's very, very quiet now. That's uh, that's practically nothing. And 100% is what I was firing everything at earlier. Burst size can go up to five. Otherwise you're basically just doing full auto. Two to three is what I prefer. And there's even a rate of fire that you can tone down for burst fire if you want it to be a little bit slower in between each shot. And then of course, full auto, practically the same thing, except for you get rid of the burst setting. So 
an ingenious little system as you can see up there, when I fire it, that's how fast the system is reading what the solenoid is going from uh, forward to back. And then of course the 95% you see up there is your battery life. You can lock the system by holding up for a little bit. Now it's locked, you can't do anything. And then if you hold it up, it will start giving you a countdown for shutting it off. And there's a hidden menu where you can change a bunch of settings, including the auto timer off, but that's advanced stuff that you probably shouldn't mess with because you can screw up your pew pew. All right, setting it to single shot. Basically, this thing is, well, a Dart Zone Pro Mark III, or maybe more like a Nexus Pro that fits in your pocket. So, try to get this as steady as I can. I mean, there's no way you guys can see that. I'll have to walk it out there. But that's with basically no angle, and that is hitting well past the 75. If I give a little bit more of an angle. Clear the range, pupper. That's okay, we're out anyway. So, to give you an idea of what that looks like. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to hit marker these, but there's one, if you can see it. That's the 75 foot line. There's another. There is another and another 100 foot line. Another, another. We got one right here. This is, I think, 116 feet. Dart there. Another one there. If I go all the way out here, there is another fresh dart. So, yeah. It definitely has range, and with a three-shot burst, you're not gonna have any problem hitting somebody at that range. Alrighty, I wanna show you the different select fire modes with the Pew Pew, starting with semi-auto. Now, one of the things that makes this blaster simply the best is the fact that not only can it do select fire, but it will literally fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. Now, with semi-auto recently, I've been having more of a problem with it firing two shots instead of one, but I have dumped probably hundreds of darts through this. In fact, if you wanna see a 430 dart dump with the Pew Pew, get subscribed, hit like, because we're gonna have a video of that coming out very soon. But here is it with just semi-auto. And if I want to, it'll fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. Now, remove that mag, swap that over to burst. It's not something that's very easy to do on the fly, but it can be done. Here is three shot burst. And that was flawless three shot burst every single shot. And what makes this the best is the fact that you can go as fast as I can mash that trigger. Now, we've got our final coup de gras, which is, of course, full auto. And this thing fires at a maximum of about 40 darts a second, but with full auto, it will really only do 10 shots until it stops. That's like an anti-melting mechanism, because if it runs for too long on full auto, it will melt the solenoid, it will get too hot, it will break things. So you do have to kind of double tap it, but it's not that bad. That was like 18 darts, gone. It is an amazing freaking blaster. And again, for something this compact and this comfortable and oh. So if this blaster wasn't already literally the best, there's a bunch of stuff on here that's small, that isn't super technologically advanced, that still makes it better than practically anything else. Uh, the mag release, for one, it's a uh, bi-directional, omnidirectional. You can literally either pull it or push it, and it feels good in either direction. 
and it's ambi. You could do it with left or right hand. I don't even know how the spring for that works. I literally have no clue, but it's springy and effective. The, oh, this is one of the biggest ones. The battery door, the grip is where the battery is of course located. It uses a 3S LiPo and the battery door is latched with this cool piece that rides on like a pin, but the actual springiness, since it's kind of hard to put a spring in there, is two magnets, something we have seen before in things like the breaking wind from Sea Yard Nerf, but that's really effective and efficient. And again, I have almost no idea how they managed to fit that into that. The flywheel cage is metal. It's literally just a piece of metal that is bent into shape, which is super effective. The flywheels are machined Delrin by the looks of it. The actual pusher is a solenoid, a very small one, an effective one. These holes on the side are actually for having a quick release like holster setup which you can purchase with the blaster or not have. The grip is extremely comfortable. And I think one of my favorite things, probably the best feature about the blaster, the thing that makes it absolutely dump on pretty much any other blaster I've ever bought ever, is not only the fact that you can turn it on with like a draw. You just wait for that little Zelda jingle to kind of hit the end note and release the trigger on that end note, but it has an auto shut off. You would not believe how every single blaster that has a board and a lipo should have an auto shut off. Every single one of them. But what's the price? Well, if you can get a hold of Pippo and you can get yourself in the list, and it is a long list at this point, you get your hands on one of these hand built, custom made pieces of art. It's gonna cost you starting at about a $430 mark. There's some differences in there because they're from Switzerland, and I am not. I'm from. United States of America, and I did not pay that price. I paid a discounted, I basically paid four parts, but that's because I'm gonna do this review, which is basically for advertising. But that is a lot of money for 3D printed what's it? I mean, it might be hard to understand why a blaster this size would cost that much. But when you put it in line with all of its contemporaries, things like the Kestrel, things like the FDL, it's actually pretty surprisingly easy to understand why it would cost that much especially when it's so far above and beyond any other blaster in its class. Basically, when it comes down to a sidearm pistol, there is nothing that really competes with this. But the question is, do you need something like this? Probably not. I, I would say most people have no use for this. Why did I buy it? Because I am desperate for a three shot burst handgun blaster. And not only do I like my blasters extremely compact and extremely efficient, this does all that. I, I, I don't know what to tell you if that concept doesn't appeal to you. I'm not, you're broken inside in my opinion, but just like how I think this is the best blaster ever, that's my opinion. So let me know what you think about the few you down in the comment section below. Is it pay to win? Is it literally going to upend the entirety of Nerf as an ecosystem and slam it down on its knee? Maybe, I have no idea. It, it's more of the person than the blaster. But that's all I got for you. I'm Walcom7. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you got all the way to the end, chances are you like what I do here. So please hit like, get subscribed, ring the bell, do all the algorithmic things, help the channel grow, help the hobby grow. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. And no, I'm not going to shoot my camera with this thing because it's absolutely going to eviscerate it. You gotta up, up, up.